All right, in this video, I'm going to explain how to set up a CO2 system. I know this is like a, something that people struggle with. They want to get into CO2 and they think it's too complicated. So I'm going to explain it um, so that you can do this yourself and it's really not that complex. Okay, so let's first talk about components. First of all, carbon to the aquarium can only be supplied by releasing high pressurized CO2 via a regulator. So you have a bottle. This is the bottle. This one is brand new. I just upgraded. I had a five, um, five gallon, I think, and this is a 10 or liters. I don't know how they measure, but I went from a five to a 10. So it's brand new, uh, still in the mesh. Nice little sexy thing. So a bottle like this will cost you around $170 at the moment. And that's what I'm seeing online. And that's what I also see at the places of supply CO2. Now with the CO2 supply, you can buy a bottle online, but it's going to be empty because uh, full bottles cannot be shipped. So you can either buy an empty bottle online and then go to a place that fills carbon dioxide to fill the bottle, or you can just go straight anywhere where the bottles are filled and buy a bottle from them. All right. So those are the two, two ways. I suggest that you buy a new bottle or a newer bottle because you know this is a very sensitive system. You are going to hook it up and have it on for quite some time. So you don't want to have any leaks. You don't want an old worn bottle with or, uh, old worn treads or anything like that. So that's your bottle. Some people do the, um, the, the paintball thing but I prefer to go to a place that fills bottles for gas stations. Um, you know, like that fizz in your soda, that's CO2 essentially. So any gas station has carbon dioxide, you know, in those machines that dispense soda. And, uh, and so find who supplies them. Like usually in an industrial area, there is um, usually a, a place where you can go and fill your bottle. So, I mean, there are like different, entities that fill them, um, but I do the food grade or the same CO2 that's um, provided for your Coca-Cola. So, you know, it's that easy. Then you fill the bottle and you bring it home. You want the bottle to acclimatize to your temperature. So you don't hook it up immediately. Leave it like for at least 12 hours in your home um, to make sure that it's on the room, room temperature before you start hooking anything up, okay? So that's the bottle. The second and the most important thing of the CO2 system is a regulator. Regulators, um, you know, there's all kinds sold and most people start with something off of Amazon. Um, I cannot endorse regulators off of Amazon based on what I've seen. Um, they, I, I think some name brands are now getting on Amazon like that are pretty decent, but I can't really endorse anything on Amazon. So I will kind of give you a few resources for a regulator. First of all, do you want to hook up just one tank or you want to hook up multiple tanks? That's the big question you have to ask yourself. I like to hook up multiple tanks. On this particular bottle, I have four different um, counters. So each line goes and feeds one of my aquariums. So four tanks operate off of one bottle. In order to be able to do that, you have to buy a regulator that is usually like a pro series. Um, and what that means is there are these manifolds and you can buy them separately and then build up your system. So usually you get just one or two. So this is a UNS regulator. It's about $230 and you already get two of these. And then if you buy like separate Manifolds, they're only like $35 a piece. Some companies that have the pro regulators will charge you like $100 per manifold. So when you're looking at your regulator, you first of all, you need to know how many tanks you want to hook up to that bottle. And then think how much those manifolds cost. Because if somebody is charging $100 for a manifold, you know, it's gonna get really expensive. You may be better off with separate bottles and separate regulators but i find this to be the most cost efficient way because you buy one bottle you buy one regulator and then you can build up i don't know what's the maximum this thing can take i have two of these regulators i have four tanks on this one i have five 
hooked up on the other one. So five works, four works. I don't know like what's their max. Okay, so let's explain how the regulator works. Usually you have two of these um, clock-like things, you know, that, that tell you things. Okay, so, uh, so there is like a connection to the bottle. So this is where you would like, you know, hook up your regulator to the bottle. And so when you open this bottle, then the CO2 goes from the bottle and the pressure comes to your regulator. So the job of the regulator is to take that high pressure in the bottle and transfer it to a pressure, a working pressure that you want. So the first clock tells you how much pressure you have in the bottle. That basically tells you how much you have in the bottle. So this one reads about 800 PSI. A very full bottle will be between eight and 900 PSI usually when you like first hook it up. This one's been running for a while, so it's around 800. Um, you have to understand that the, the level of pressure in the bottle will depend on the room temperature because the hotter it is, the the, the more it will expand and you will have like um, you will have like a higher pressure. And then the colder it is, that pressure could be really low. So if you're measuring the pressure on your bottle, make sure that you're doing that on a room temperature, usually like 74 degrees, whatever is in your fish room, or you know wherever you have your aquarium so that you know that um you know that you have kind of a full bottle so every time you go and fill your bottle you know that pressure may vary a little bit depending on how they filled it how much they filled it now you don't really want to see it fill past like 950 psi because that's too high you are like you know at the risk of explosion and nobody will fill your bottle past like a 950 they shouldn't okay so First one tells you how much gas you have. Um, CO2 is in liquid uh, state only when it's pressurized. Once it's no, no longer pressurized, it becomes a gas. And that's what we want to supply to our tank. Okay, so it hits on this piece. The, the gas pressure hits on this piece. It says, okay, you have this much gas, this much pressure in the bottle. And then you have this, usually like some sort of a knob in the middle where you can set your working pressure. Now this is PSI on like how much pressure you want. Now this is a membrane, that's where it regulates your pressure. And now you're telling it, okay, I want 30 PSI. So typical PSI for working pressure between 30 and 35 PSI. So I've kept this one at 30, okay? So, so now this regulator is reducing the pressure instead of pumping nine eight hundred psi's you know through it is reducing that from 800 to 30 and that's what you want for your working pressure the next part of the regulator that you usually get so this is the regulator this whole part is the regulator so you have a connection to your bottle then you have the place that tells you how much is in the bottle you have the place where you regulate your pressure and then it goes usually to a connection that connects to a solenoid what the solenoid is, is simple as switch. It, it turns CO2 on and off. This, you hook up to your electricity. And so you, usually you put on a timer with your lights. So when your timer, when the electricity is on, the CO2 turns on. When the electricity is off, the CO2 turns off. So it's a no brainer. It comes with your system in most cases. And you know, it's like, you know, it, it's, it's basically how you automate your CO2. So you don't have to like go every day turn it on and turn it off like you do with with those little systems beginner systems so basically now when once you hook this up it can run as long as you have gas in the bottle once you kind of get low it will tell you here this this arrow as you're spending your gas is going to go down and then you will kind of see when your bottle is near the end now with the regulator purchase it's very important to buy a good regulator because people who don't buy good regulators have something called end of the bottle dump when the regulator is not doing a good job of regulating that pressure when the pressure in the bottle gets really low so with that you know sometimes they can poison their fish i do not recommend cheap regulators like you know i've i've been through that phase and it's really worth it to buy something decent so this one from UNS is actually a very good deal. 
Uh, there is CO2 art that I've heard good things about. There is green leaf aquariums that they make sort of like the best out there. And they also give you like a lifetime warranty. I do have one GLA regulator, but it's an older model and I can't buy those extra manifolds without paying $100 a piece. Now, the reason why I went with UNS twice is because their manifolds are only $35 a piece. So I pay, so I paid $220 for this. Now, and now I'm, I know that there is inflation and prices could change, but like for $220, I got the regulator and the two hookups and then the additional two were 70, 35, 35. So for about $300 in a regulator, and then about $200 with the bottle with gas. So that's about $500 system and it can do four tanks. Okay, so now uh, the pressure is regulated. The solenoid is turned on. It says, yeah, let the gas through. So the gas goes in and as the gas goes in, um, you have like these separate manifolds and I have labeled them number one, number two, number three, number four, so that I know like, you know, what to hook up to what. So basically the one on the left is the very left aquarium. This is the second, the third and so on. So it's really easy for me when I got here, if I want to regulate my, all the one to the left, second, third or the fourth, you know, it's kind of easy. So. Um, usually you get like a bubble counter. So the bubble counter is basically, so now you're lighting the gas. You can see how many bubbles, so like I can, you know, I can turn this up. I can turn more bubbles or less bubbles. You know, it's like, you can regulate via this knob. So you, you can see how many bubbles you're letting in. And then you fill this little section with water so that you can see the bubbles. If the water evaporates, which it does uh, after a period of time, then you don't, you can't really see here. I mean, you can still regulate the amount of gas that goes out, but your only place to look is at the, at the diffuser. So, you know, you don't want to blow your diffuser if you let a lot of bubbles through. So essentially, um, you know, it's, it's really nice to have a bubble counter right where your knob is so that you can kind of decide how many bubbles you want per second or whatever. And it starts low and then, you know, you can build up. But I, I'm finding most tanks don't really need more than like a couple of bubbles per second. I mean, you know, maybe if you have a really large tank, you may have to hook up like two of the diffusers, like one on each side or something. But um, this is pretty much how I run them. So in one second, I get like two to three bubbles per second on my tanks. Okay, so now, you take the manifold where you are like dispensing. So like this one is four. So this is that one right above. And you buy a CO2 pressure proof tubing. This tubing is really hard and it is not like air tubing. It is hard and it is meant to not lose CO2 through it. So it will even stiffen more as time goes on. So you hook it up, you tighten this here and then your line goes goes you know up to your aquarium so now was another important thing is that before you go into your aquarium let me see okay this is a good example so number four so this hard tubing goes see number four that's the hard tubing then you need to get a check valve you put a check valve and this is a co2 specific one it's really it's a made of metal so the gas can go in, but it cannot go back. And that's really important because you don't want the, you know, the back pressure to be building too much. I mean, if you let the water go in, it will go all the way down to your uh, bubble counter. And, um, and then, you know, it takes a long time for the gas to build up. But essentially, if you have a check valve, the gas comes here and through, but it doesn't come back. So like, if you have like a siphon from your, um, CO2 dispenser, it, you know, the water may come to here, but it won't go back down. So then the CO2 goes through this little pipe, goes, goes, goes through and over, and then you attach it to uh, some sort of a diffuser. So this is just a glass one, nothing super expensive. And then, you know, those same bubbles that you have seen on the counter are now poop, plopping right there. So that's really all there is to CO2 system. Those are all the components. 
Uh, anyone can hook it up. I'm a girl and I can do it, so you can do it too. Um, it's not that complicated. The job of the regulator is to regulate the amount of pressure. So somebody asked me, like, does it matter how big your bottle is? It doesn't. Really, the bigger the bottle you have, the <laughs> better it is for you because you will not have to like exchange it that often. You will, um, you know, the bigger the bottle, obviously more gas, but the pressure in the bottle is the same. So when you get a full bottle, whether it's a 10 pounder, 20 pounder, 30 pounder, whatever size, it's always going to be around 900 PSI. And, and then the pressure will go down as you're spending your gas. And then you have to like go and refill your bottle. So essentially the bigger supply of CO2 you have, the less frequently you have to go for the refill. Now, when I go for refills, I ask them to refill my bottle. For that, you sometimes have to wait. Some places don't have like somebody to fill right away. So you may have to leave your bottle, pay, and then come like the next day for your full CO2. So it's a little bit of a hassle for me, but you know, that's essentially the process. The last thing you need to know about the CO2 system, the most important thing is the membrane here that regulates that pressure. And you don't want to blow your membrane. Okay, so, so now it's working. If I wanted to turn this off, I would have to release the pressure on the membrane. That is very important. You don't want like to blow your membrane because that's not really covered by any insurance. So, you know, it's important to follow the steps and usually, um, so these instructions are, came with the GLA regulator, but they're really good and I kind of keep them. They actually laminated for me. So it's, it's telling you how to install the regulator, um, fill bubble counter with water, install tubing, open cylinder valve. Okay, so now once you've hooked everything up is then when you turn on your CO2 and then you adjust the low pressure. That's the low pressure. This is high pressure, this is the low pressure. You close the needle valve. Okay, so that's the needle valve in there. So, um, you know, you close it and then you install CO2 diffuser. Power the solenoid, adjust bubble rate, and then it tells you also how to remove and refill. So the G Green Leaf Aquariums, I have one of theirs. It looks a little bit different, but it does exactly the same thing. So, um, you know, like that's, that's how you set up a CO2. So now you can have a regular with just one, supplying just one tank, two tanks, three tanks, however many you want. Um, and you know, you can ask the manufacturer how many the regulator can take, but what's most important in the regulator is that it can keep constant working pressure. If it's not keeping pressure, it's not a good regulator. And if it's doing some kind of a dump toward the end, it's not a good regulator. So don't try to save money on a regulator because if you buy a cheap one, you will just you know, have to replace it eventually. I mean, th that's kind of a sturdy piece of equipment. And once you have it, you know, it's, it's gonna last you. So, <coughs> excuse me, I can show you, I mean, my videos are really unsophisticated and unedited. So here I've hooked up five. I have a really large bottle here. I locked out to get that one. So I have the same type of a regulator and I hooked up five. One, two, three, four, five. So number one is supplying the one right above. And then number two, number, you know, I kind of like do them in the order as they stand. So I can have five. So this bottle is gonna last longer because it's a larger bottle. So the larger bottle you have, the better it is. When I started with CO2, I went with five pounds. I think it goes by pounds, five pounds, 10 pounds. When I started, I had these little bottles and they go relatively quick. Like every two, three months, I have to go and refill. So this regulator is a GLA. They're kind of like the gold standard, they're the best. So same thing. I mean, it's just like the readings are a little bit different on different sides. So this is the high pressure. It's telling me that it has like almost 900 PSI. It's like a full bottle. I'm keeping the working pressure at 30. My solenoid is on. I regulate my bubble count here. It goes through the stiff CO2 tubing. It goes up and then it goes up, 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 up. And in this case, I have a um, diffuser that, that came with a check valve. 
so essentially the water can't go past past that it's really important that you have a good check valve for uh meant for co2 so it's also important that you use co2 tubing and not airline because airline you're going to lose co2 you will waste your co2 and it looks like i have algae growing on this um but you know it's okay algae is part of life so anyways that's all there is to co2 i wish you luck all you have to do is buy a good regulator get yourself a CO2 bottle and hook everything up. Happy fish keeping.